Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. Super, super good podcast episode today. Uh, anyway, I want to let you know about a couple things. Autofiber.com, we have a new Jimbo kit coming. Uh, so uh, Jimbo kit 2.0, everyone's been obsessed and loves the Jimbo kit of towels. It gives you a little sampling of a lot of Auto Fiber's towels. Uh, and we have a Jimbo kit 2.0 coming out. So look out for that. Autofiber.com. Of course, we have our Australian uh, family down there at autofiber.com.au. And we have our Australian family up to the north of where I am in Canada. That's Australia. Australia. Hello. Autofiber.ca up there. So if you're in Canada, you're in Australia, you listen to the podcast and want some Autofiber goodies, you could check out those two uh, wonderful people right there. Another one is the Detailer Inner Circle. Uh, that is rocking and rolling. When you sign up, uh, you're on top of everything else that we offer. You're going to get a kind of a welcome kit if you if you can say it that way. A welcome kit of about four hundred dollars worth of chemicals. So I partnered up with a manufacturer, uh, and we're going to give you about four hundred dollar retail value worth of chemicals just for signing up for the Detailer Inner Circle as a welcome. Uh, a welcome package. So that, and then the last and uh, but not least is House Call Pro. I've teamed up with them to offer you guys, uh, you get a free demo to see how House Call Pro works. It's a CRM, which in this conversation today, uh, when we're talking with Mark, uh, he talks about how he used Excel spreadsheets and stuff like that. But also, so if, if you're currently doing that, a really good CRM or a customer relationship management software that integrates extremely well with the Detailer Inner Circle, and I'm sure the Detail Mentor as well, uh, is House Call Pro. If you go through my link, that's housecallpro.com slash ADP. I'll link it in the description below. Uh, you're going to get a free demo to see how it works. And that's really what I want to encourage you to do. Just a no strings attached, no credit card know nothing just see the demo to see how it could maybe help your business and then if you choose to go beyond that you're going to get the first month for 19 bucks through house call pro which is more than half off um the monthly rate if you choose to go beyond that uh and i've done, done a whole podcast episode on that so enough of all that good stuff again just a few really uh important things that help propel this podcast forward. And I greatly appreciate you supporting anywhere you can. Uh, and I, I like if I can give you an additional thing and then get a little bit of support on the back end. So that's what those three things offer there. All right, into the episode we go. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I almost said Auto Detailing Business Journey. And that's because today's guest is Mark Barger, the detail mentor and also owner and operator over at Visual Pro Detailing. Mark, welcome to the Auto Detailing Podcast. Hey, man. Thanks for having me today. Super excited. And as you alluded to or, or spoke about before we started recording, it's like we, we run in the same circle. We, we've both been running in the same circles for a long time and never really cross paths and had a conversation with each other. So we we've chatted for about 20 minutes offline and it's uh, it feels like it's been two minutes. So I'm really excited to uh, share your journey uh, with detailers or at least my audience that may not be too familiar with you. And so, uh, yeah, I'm super, super excited for this, this episode. Um, where are you based out of again? I am out of Johnson. City, Illinois, which is not anywhere near Chicago. I'm as, <laughs> about as far south in Illinois as possible. I'm like 40 minutes from Kentucky. Is that always like the, the follow-up question when you say where you're from for people? Do they go, oh, is that close yeah. to Chicago? Yeah, anytime Got you it. say you're from Illinois, it's like, where, where, how far are you from Chicago? About four and a half hours. Um, I live in a town of 3,600 people. So wow. when I say that I come from a very small rural market, it really does not get much smaller than where I'm at. Let's. I, I want to talk about that um, because I think that because that is a question, and I think we're going to have the same kind of questions get asked to each other from different people that may be listening. So sorry if it gets a little redundant, but. I definitely want to touch on that. We could either do it now or later, uh, but how to market in a rural area. You know, I, I have kind of the opposite 
situation. Um, I think in my small town, there's like 40,000 and I'm like centered in, you know, Southern California. So it's like no shortage of people around my neck of the woods. Um, but let's, I wanted to throw that out there so we don't forget. Why don't you take us way back to how you started detailing and why detailing in the first place? Well, um, I was working retail and I, I hated it. I always wanted to start my own business. Whenever I first got married, I worked at a dealership. And um, I, that's where I learned how to not detail. <laughs> um, I, you know, sometimes I think that my, um, my time as a professional now is punishment for the year and a half I was working at a dealership, <laughs> hacking up cars with a rotary. Um, so it's like I have to remove all those swirls and holograms that I put into mm. the cars while I was doing that totally untrained. They're just like, here's the detail bay, have fun. And um, wow. I, I got a taste of it, but I also, like, I didn't know what I was doing. But I wanted to start my own business. I wanted to get out of retail. I was in a dead-end job. I didn't want to go down the corporate route. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, heck with it. I'm going to start my own business. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, ironically enough, I actually started out with a lawn care business because it was easier and faster to get going. And I needed income. And it's like, you know, this isn't really for me. I sold that off to a family member. I got into the detailing business and um, I started out with the truck, the trailer. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I borrowed a bunch of money, got in a bunch of debt and I had no idea what I was doing from a business perspective, but all I knew is I wanted to be a detailer. I wanted to make money doing this. And um, during the first about three years, of being a, well, a detailer. I don't know that I would consider myself <laughs> professional those first three years, but being a detailer, I think I made every single possible mistake a human being can make in this business. Mm. Um, Name I a couple. Just, uh, oh, gosh. Um, I spent all my money on stuff rather than education, improvement, mm. I didn't um, spend money on training. I didn't have people that were willing to help me out um, to learn how to run the business, like how to sell details, how to formulate mm -hmm. everything, how to market, how to sell. And what was the real catalyst, that was about three years into my business. And I was just surviving, man. Mm -hmm. I, I was barely making it. And I mean, <laughs> my wife looked at me one day and she said, listen, I know you want to do this and I want to support your dream, but something has to change. And at this point, I had tried to reach out to a lot of detailers out there. And back, you know, five, six years ago at this point in time, there weren't the resources there were now. Right. I mean, you didn't have all the training classes. You didn't have all the Facebook groups. I mean, you had like the auto geek forums and a few other medias out there, but you didn't have a lot of people that you could knock on their door and say, Hey, I'm struggling. Can you help me out? And I reached mm -hmm. out to a ton of people, good detailers, success. And they just, they didn't have time for me. They didn't care. Wouldn't return the phone call. And my wife, she's like, listen, something we ought to change. I, I want to support your dream, but something's got to change. And I remember it was like a distinctive moment in my life. I looked at her and I said, give me one year, give me one year. Mm. And if I can't start turning this around, I'll hang up the polisher. I'll just mm. get out. And was it because you were just like working yourself to the bone and not, not making any money? Was it, uh, you, you had accrued this debt from tools, I'm assuming and stuff. And it just wasn't, it just wasn't working. You were stressed out. Your relationship was suffering because of it or, or all of it all of it. And I wasn't, mm. the biggest thing is I just wasn't making enough money. Right. I wasn't making enough money per detail. I was dead all winter long. So I mm. was having three, four, five months where there was like no income coming in. And when I was working, I was working for way too little. I didn't know how to sell. I didn't know how to market. I didn't know my value. And mm. when I got to this place, I've got the, like the first thing that I have to do is I've got to figure out how to sell. I've got to figure out how to improve myself. And I, um, 
I downloaded the Audible app on my phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, there was ironically the day I downloaded it, there was a deal of the day where you can buy yep. an audio book for really cheap. And it's just like a random audio book. I don't know if you have Audible, but I do. And yeah, it, it was Take the Stairs. Yep, by an author named Rory Baden. It's a great book and, and a phenomenal yeah. audio book. It, uh, oh, I love that book. It, you probably share the same thing. It is very hard to like I think about SEMA and at SEMA they have like the escalator or the stairs it, after reading that uh, book impossible to <laughs> not have guilt after taking the escalator or anywhere really absolutely impossible yeah I, I, I downloaded the audio book and I was working I remember I was working on an appointment that day it's only like a what four and a half five hour long audio book mm-hmm. I listened to that audio book and I, I honestly felt like I was being punched in the gut mm. the whole time I was listening to it. And I got through the audio book and I felt like sick to my stomach. And it's mm. like, if I would have known all this information three years ago, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. And I immediately started the audio book over again, just from Such scratch. I just had to get back into it. And that's when I started going in, to all extents and purposes, crazy. Mm. I started getting hold of every single book, literature, mm-hmm. video I could get a hold of. I would go to the bookstores, the libraries. I would borrow books, anything to do with business, entrepreneurship, sales, marketing. Mm. And I started just applying the knowledge and it started to change. I, mm. I actually, the year that I had listened to take the stairs and I told my wife, if I don't start changing things around this year, I actually made some money that year. Wow. And I told her, it's like, whoa, we actually have money because I was selling details. I was starting to sell coatings. Mm. I was busier during the winter than I'd ever been. And it really started to turn around. The, the quote from that book that just gets me every time if I don't butcher it, I think it's success is never owned, it's rented, and the rent is due every day. Is that the right book? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, you nailed it, man. Yep, yep. So so through all that literature, what were like the first couple things that you started to implement that um, started to work right away? Because when, when we think about – and I'm – so excited by this and I'm so excited that there's someone else like you preaching that you need to run a business first and I I go to the extent of saying almost learn how to detail second but you need to learn yeah. how to run a business and market and get yeah. clients in the door because it's great you know how to run a polisher it's phenomenal that you have the latest and greatest polisher or whatever the tool is right but if you don't have a customer calling to use that tool on it's useless Right. So I'm, I'm glad that there's yeah. someone else at the mountaintop shouting the, the same kind of verbiage. Right. So but what were you yeah. know, detailers think marketing is going to a mall parking lot and dropping business cards off on people's cars oh, or 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 uh, canvassing a neighborhood and, and dropping flyers. So uh, <laughs> with the or sharing their Facebook posts on buy, sell, trade groups. On yes. Facebook. Yes. So <laughs> Which, what... <laughs> again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with those things, but that's not what marketing is. It's, it's not. And it's I always come down to like, will you get a customer by dropping, you know, 500 flyers off on a, on doorsteps? Maybe. But it's like extremely inefficient and ineffective, really, you know, with your time and, right. and resources. But what were a couple things that um, you did when you started to make that transition that you that you saw pay off right away? Was there like one or two things that stand out like, man, I did this and it was like I it just started popping for me? Well, three things I really I could summarize it in three things because we don't have all day, obviously. Right. But the first thing was I, I learned that the biggest problem was me and that I had to be a more self-disciplined, smarter, and more consistent person with my business. Mm. That was that was the first thing. I, I made that, and some people were like, well, that's stupid. That's pretty obvious. No, it's not obvious because most people don't do that. Uh, and I realized I had to be consistent with what I did. The second thing is I got into Grant Cardone's yeah. the 10X rule okay. and listened to that. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm not a like diehard follower of Cardone. Some of the stuff he, 
just doesn't, I don't think it's relative to me. Right. Some okay. of the things he teaches, but one, the big thing that I got from it is when he talks about obscurity mm-hmm. yep. and that obscurity is the enemy of every single business out there. Most people yep. are not doing business with you, not because they don't need your product or services because they don't know they exist. Yep. So I set out to end my obscurity to the people that actually mattered. People who could afford and wanted my products and services needed to know that I existed. Hmm. And that was my kind of second thing. My third thing was to create and implement a marketing plan. Meaning every two weeks, I'm going to send out an email blast to all Hmm. my email subscribers. Every third day, I'm going to make a Facebook post and engage my community from there. I'm going to send people referral cards and thank you notes and the the entire system of marketing, which is getting in front of the right amount of people. And ironically, it was one of my clients that gave me probably one of the greatest insights that I've had as a business owner. I had just done a paint correction and coding on my first ever Porsche. It was a, a 911 Carrera. Nothing super special, but in my area, when you see a Porsche, it like pulls Mm. people's heads. There are just not many Porsches in a town of 3,600 people in Southern Illinois. Mm. And he said, first of all, he said, I almost didn't use you because your prices were too low. Whoa. Like, oh, crap, that sucks. Right. Um, And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, if you would have told me it would have been $1,500 to do this, I probably would have jumped right on it. But you said Mm -hmm. 500 bucks and it scared me to death. Mm -hmm. And that was when I just started doing corrections and coatings. I had no idea how to price it. And he said, the second thing is I'm kind of concerned for your future because (laughs) while you do great work, I can only see like one out of a thousand people actually wanting a correction and coating on their car and being willing to pay for it. Mm. And (laughs) You know, he said that and like, I probably stared at him for like five minutes. He probably thought I was like zoning out or something, but it like a huge light bulb hit in my head. Mm. And I just thought, wait a second, let's assume he's right. Let's assume that only one in a thousand people want my services and are willing to pay for them. I Mm. said, that's great. Because that means all I have to do is get in front of a thousand people a day Mm -hmm. with my message and I can sell a coding and correction almost every single day. Mm. And after I took that in and started implementing my marketing plan with the goal of getting in front of through Facebook and social media and through my other marketing efforts in front of at least a thousand people a day, Mm -hmm. it started lighting up, man. I I was beating down the phone. (laughs) Wow. Because I was getting in front of the right amount of people and the right type of people through my marketing plans and through my efforts, and things started turning around very, very quickly. Wow. And how long ago was that 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 shift started to happen? That happened between three to four years ago. Got it. Awesome. And so how has the past three to four years been? Just insanely busy? Um, the, the, it took about two years after I really got serious about it Mm -hmm. until I was booked on average four to eight weeks ahead of time, Gotcha. mostly with corrections and coding jobs, which is ironic because everyone in this area that I told about my business that wasn't a client of mine told me no one will ever pay that type of money. You'll never get that much business around here. And nowadays, I've, I've got a reputation where people just call me up and be like, hey, I heard you're the coding guy. I want to mm. schedule my blah, 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 blah. So it's, if I would have listened to all the people that were telling me it can't be done, mm. I, would, I would not be talking to you right now. Mm. Wow. And did you have some sort of system in place to kind of deal if, if you're reaching a thousand people a day and the phone's starting to ring off the hook it, it would seem to me like it, it actually you start having an, another problem right like managing all this 
data essentially right people's names numbers what you talked to them about was there any like uh crm or any system that you you started to implement to kind of handle this much like like how do you how do you manage all that info you know and not go well, crazy the the thing is that um i've always been one of those people that like keep it simple stupid okay and i was just getting started with actually making money so i didn't have a money to drop a couple hundred bucks a month on a CRM system, mm -hmm. Excel spreadsheets and notebooks <laughs> Got it. were my, um, and you know, I would just write it down. Like if someone called me, take down their name, their number, what type of car, what were they interested in? If they didn't schedule back then, I would put a note on it and said, call them back in two weeks and see if they're still interested in it. And I, I basically made, I was my own CRM system because I didn't have the money yeah, to buy okay. it. Because like yep. nowadays you can get like free CRM systems out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, there's a lot of stuff you can get totally free if you sign up for it. But back then I, I just didn't have the money for it. I didn't have the know-how of it. So I was mm. just, I made my own system and I started, um, you know, as crazy as this sounds, it's relevant. I started getting up at five in the morning every day, mm -hmm. every single day. And I started creating content. I started creating YouTube videos. I've mm -hmm. got one that um, says the topic is problems with ceramic coatings that's got over 300,000 views on YouTube, which wow. isn't that much, but um, it's got over 300,000 views. People. And, yeah. and I've got a couple hundred videos on my YouTube channel, mm. and I just started pumping out crazy content on top of my marketing, mm -hmm. and I get so much business from YouTube Mm. It's unbelievable. It's a very underutilized source of business development for people. That that's one thing I've been telling a ton of people to do too. That uh, that are in my group and and people I interact with through the podcast. It's like you're already doing the work. You're already doing the car. You're already you know you're you're already there, right? If you can master how to get the client, you're doing the work. Like just take a simple video. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. It doesn't need to be, you know, highly produced and freaking put it on YouTube. It's insane. You know, and you could repurpose yeah. it in so many ways and, and it's and, free. And it's free. I'm like and they're like, Yeah, but how do you get clients from it? I'm like, Well, you could worry about that later. Like worry about capturing the the footage first, right? What, and then like worry What about people that. don't understand though. What people don't understand about that though is that you can connect your YouTube page through Google to your website. Yep. And if you have a well-visited YouTube page that has a lot of subscribers, it will actually increase your search engine optimization scores yep. Yep. because YouTube and Google are connected mm -hmm. and your search rankings will go up if you have a website that is connected to a YouTube page. Yep, yep. It's, it's a serious hack that is super, super cool that I, I'm with you. People need to take way, way more advantage of, you know, and not, I'm jumped over to your YouTube page because you said that it's like, yeah, one minute, two minute videos. I mean, and that's what's crazy. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. It could be very, very simple, very simple. Oh, you yeah. know? And it's, yeah, it, yeah. It, most of my videos are me just walking around the car. Hey, everyone, Mark here from Visual Pro Detailing. Yep. I just completed doing a crystal serum ultra application on this blah, 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 blah. Yep. And I just walk around it with the camera saying what I did. Yep. Stop, load, done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you can literally download the YouTube, what is it, the, like YouTube Creators app or YouTube Studio or something uh -huh. and do it like right there. You know? Yep. It's crazy, crazy easy. So, cool. So, you, you struggle through your detailing business. You take a deep dive into marketing, branding, whatever. Grow your business. It's popping. So, that brought us to kind of like, I guess present day kind of so what is what is your uh detailing business look like right now and obviously you're not mobile in illinois at least during the winter right no no i am um i'm home based now Got i it. do everything out of a home based shop and um it's it's very convenient it's very fun i'm working to get into a bigger shop this spring um but about two years ago i got this crazy wild idea that I was going to create a, kind of like a Facebook blog page hmm. <laughs> and just kind of tell people about detailing and what it's like to be a pro detailer. And I named it Detailer's Business Journey. And hmm. I just got on there. And, and at first, it was just like almost something to vent with. 
I just started posting random stuff on there through my day about what I was doing and Mm -hmm. what sucked about the detailing business, what was great about it. And then I got this wild inkling and it's like, this is going nowhere. I'm going to start doing a live video talking about different marketing topics, business topics, detailing topics. I'm going to start doing a live video every day, (laughs) five days a week. Dang. (laughs) And... I was just like, you know, heck with it, man. I'm just going to send it. Mm-hmm. And I started doing this. And the the first couple of weeks, whatever, had a couple of likes on each video. Mm-hmm. And then it just started just blowing up. And it, right now it's got about 2,500 followers, which isn't much, except for the fact that it's 95% pro detailers that follow mm-hmm. my page. There's like, there's no like just consumers that are interested in it because it's not relevant to them. Right. Almost all of my followers are pro detailers. And after I started doing the live videos, after a couple um, couple months of doing it, I started getting messages from people. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, can you help me out with my business? Can you give me some advice? Can you can you help me? Can you what books did you read? What how mm-hmm. can how can you know how can you what you did can it be emulated with with my business? And mm-hmm. Um, I was getting such volume of like inquiries and people messaging me or something like that. I, I put a post on there and I was like, would you guys be interested in a website? You could go in there, pay like a small subscription fee every month. And I take you step by step how to make a marketing plan, how to mm. sell, what works, what doesn't work. And it just lit up. <laughs> wow. And I uh, I started Detail Mentor about a year and a half ago, and that's okay. just a mentorship website where, and that's got about 170, 180 videos on it right now. Wow! And it's all there's some tech stuff on there, but it's mostly just talking about business, man. Got it. How to grow, how to sell, how to market, all that stuff, and it's I so needed. You know, it's helped a lot of people. It's so it's needed. A our, lot of people. Man, it is so needed in our industry. And I touched on it earlier, but it's like, I feel like it's the most important part of the industry if you're trying to make money doing this. And it's the least yeah. talked about, most underserved, least sexiest part about it. You know, it, it's Absolutely. it's insane, Absolutely. you know, how, how much people think they don't need it and don't care about it, you know. And it's like, no, this is more important than what wheel cleaner you use. Trust me. You know, <laughs> yeah, it really is. So, what is that? Yeah, and I go ahead. Sorry, I, I was the website is www.detailmentor.com. I think that's what you're about to ask, but I'm not yep. sure. Yep, yep, okay. And... Um, it's detailmentor.com. I do monthly subscriptions, you can do a yearly subscription, and um, if you do a yearly subscription, you get an autoality.com detailers club um, yearly subscription is for awesome. free. If yeah. you sign up to that. And I also do an advanced mentoring um, thing to where we do like biweekly phone calls and I don't have space for anyone in that. I've closed that down for right now because I've got enough people in it to where I just can't handle a whole lot more in that. Um, yeah. But it, it gives you access to everything. There's ad copy write ups in there. Um, it, there's just there's tons and tons of content and I'm going to be adding more to it. Um, but I've always told people that my goal as being a content creator and a voice for the detailing industry, which I never planned to be. It just happened. I'm actually a very introverted person. Um, and it's really uncomfortable for me to ever get out and talk about myself. But my goal was to be the resource that I didn't have whenever I was trying to grow my business and whenever I was struggling. Mm. Love that. And that is that's that. still my goal today. Yep. It, it, and I don't know what else to say other than it's so needed, you know, and I can see it, one thing I will touch on and, and don't worry, everyone listening, me and Mark talked about this before and I was totally okay with him talking about detailmentor.com and Mark, you brought it up and said, Hey, can I talk about this or not? I know you have your group, the detailer inner circle. And here's the deal. I truly feel that, uh, it, it is so needed, right? And, and look, different strokes for different folks. Some people like spaghetti and lasagna. Some people like pizza. Some people like hamburgers. Yep. It's like it, 
whether you like de- detailing mentor, whether you like the detailer inner circle, you should probably be in both to be honest. Right. And, I agree. And, I totally agree. and, and I just love unification of the industry. So I'm 100% good with mark talking about it i think it's a great program even though i've never seen the inside of it but mark you seem like a great guy and i just wanted to make sure i said that out loud because you need to know how to run a business you need marketing tips and there's no i would so much rather have you listen and and uh and pay to be behind someone who's actually done it especially in the industry that you want to grow right so like yeah, that's the thing you, you know mark's done it and continues to do it right it's not like you hang up your hat from detailing and and you know only do this like online coaching thing and now you're a coach guru but your your ears not to the ground it's like no, you're still detailing. In fact, you're you're looking at expanding your detailing business. Is what it sounds like, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and 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 that's always been the kind of the thing that I've tried to get across to people is that there's a lot of places that you can get good business information. The other side of that, though, is that we are in a very niche industry. Yep. It is a luxury service. Yep. Unless you're so out of touch with the marketplace and your own value, then it's a commodity service. And that's when people go bankrupt. Mm. Um, so you've got to become a specialist. You've got to treat it as a luxury service. You have to understand your own value and give other people value. And you do that through education and growth. You mm. cannot be a one person army. You have got to get as many resources behind you as you possibly can um, I've got to the place in my detailing business, which it's about to go wild and crazy. Um, usually like the first of April. I just, I mean, I've already got like eight, 10 coding jobs co- scheduled right now, but it, usually the first of April, it just goes absolutely insane. Mm. So I'm, I'm either going to be buying a new house that has a bigger shop that I can grow out of or um, renting or leasing or buying a shop. And when I do that, part of my, goal is to not only grow my own detailing business, but I want to take detail mentor to a much higher level in the industry and start having for subscribers, no cost training classes Mm. for Um. non-subscribers, dirt cheap. Like you, you, you basically would just pay cost of materials and what it would cost, um, just expenses only. Mm. to bring people in and elevate the industry through education, hands-on, but also like, you know, there's a lot of people that do hands-on tech classes. I have never heard of anyone that does a hands-on business class for detailers. Nope. There was one, it was called the detailing marketing bootcamp, but I know the guy that put that on. Never heard of it. Gotcha. I never heard I'm of joking. that. I, I, I just said I never heard of one. Yeah. Um, but, I'm just um, razzing you. you gotcha. I, I gotcha. But, um, you know, that's the thing, though, is like people had never even heard of it. Right. Before. I had not heard yep. of the boot camp. No, 100%. Um, that's just because people are so focused on the shiny bottles. 100%. That they are, they are overlooking they, you know, this whole thing, like you can't see the, the forest in the midst of the trees. Yep. Um, you know, I think I probably just butchered that. But um, gotcha. a lot of people, they're so focused on the shiny bottles mm-hmm. and the latest polisher and the coolest microfiber. And, you know, I see people like I've had messages from people and I've never named names. I'm like a doctor. It's like HIPAA to me whenever people contact sure. me. But I've had hundreds if not thousands of detailers reach out to me over the past couple of years and i'll have some guy message me and be like dude i'm totally broke i don't have any money i'm not (laughs) selling any details what do i do like even if you don't invest in me invest in someone and start learning business start learning how to sell yep two weeks later hey man business is still slow but i just bought a new mighty light (laughs) too tips for me (laughs) I was just, that's so and, funny you said that because I was gonna say sell your extractor. That is I cannot believe you just said mighty. That is so funny. That's a, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, ironically, they would like and and I, all the time that happens. And I, I'm I never be rude to people because you make your own choices. Sure. In life. It's personal responsibility. You make your own choices in life. But it's like, listen, I can't help you if you don't help yourself. Yep. 
I can't help you if you don't have a mindset to grow and learn and educate yourself. If, mm-hmm. if you're not willing to do that and you'd rather just play with, with shiny bottles and tools and equipment and stuff like that, um, you know, you're, you're on your own path there because I know what it took mm. to take my business from absolutely nothing, like broke, barely surviving, to mm. doing really well for myself. I know what it took, and it took me investing in myself as a person before I invested in my business. Mm. Hmm. Well, you sure know how to, uh, I was going to say know how to talk, but that's, that doesn't do it justice. You're very, uh, like you mentioned when we got on and that's why I told you, I love doing these podcasts with people who create content because you're very concise and you know exactly what to say, what you, what you mean when you're saying it and all that. And I, I, it's, it's very enjoyable to do podcasts with people like yourself, you know, that can nail it down to where I I'm sitting on what you just said. And I'm like, Hmm, that makes so much sense. And it's spot on. I don't even know what to say. (laughs) Well, Hey, I'm just going to be, I'm all about like being honest and transparent. A lot of my videos, like, especially when I first started, they were awful, man. I would, Mm. I would, I would go live. And when you're live, there's like no taking it back right. after the fact. Right. I'd be done with a dive video and I'd be like, I just made an idiot out of myself. <laughs> that made absolutely no sense. But I've always just been one of those people that whenever I create content, whenever I talk to people, I just hit the live button and send it. Yep. And whatever happens, happens. And um, over the years of doing it, I've got a lot better at it just because, because I think it's been like over 400 some odd live videos that I've done from the wow. page. Um, at this point and you know you just you get good at making your message very sharp and to the point and it makes some people mad because I talk about apes all the time Mm -hmm. and an ape is someone that's filled with arrogance pride and ego Mm. and there's way too many apes in the detail if you're an ape you're never going to grow yep you're going to get to a certain point and then it's going to stop Yep. Because you think you know more than everyone else. And mm. I will never be one of those people. I'm, I'm an open book. I'm a sponge. And to this day, even if someone messages me or calls me that they don't know anything about detailing, I take the mindset I can learn something from talking to this person. It's always, for me too, it's, always, it's the same way. And it's always like the newest person that I learn the most from, right? Like the most, like, the most, uh, uh, new to the industry person is like, I always pick up some little nugget or the most nuggets from that person. Cause they're constantly asking questions, you know, like, what about that? What yeah. about that? And it's like, you know, as you probably know, after doing it for years and years and years, you kind of get stuck in a groove in your routine and the way you do things uh-huh. and all that. And it's like to bring in a fre- fresh perspective is uh unbelievably helpful sometimes. Yeah. So- and you know, and, and as much as I think this is relevant, but you have new people that come in and they haven't been trained in the lingo of the industry. Mm. They haven't been trained in what not to talk about on the Facebook groups and in, in the chats and things like that. Mm. And you often peel questions out of them that other people want to know, but they're too embarrassed to ask. Totally. And (laughs) there's way too many detailers out there that are way too concerned with what other detailers think about them. Yep. Because um, m- most detailers, your entire professional life, your competitors and your peers are never going to pay one single bill that you're ever going to have. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's that. That's what I don't understand when I see Facebook ads geared towards other detailers, or just ads in general yeah. geared towards other detailers. I'm like. What are you doing? Another detailer is not going to hire you to detail their car. I, I'm, you know, right. So, yeah, anyway, and, <laughs> yeah, I, I always tell people when they show me because a lot of people be like, "Can you check out my Facebook page?" Mm. And I, I look at it, and you know, I, my eyes roll back in my head because the content is extremely boring. It's not eye catching, and the mm. ad copy. And I usually nine times out of ten, I message them back, and I'm like, "Listen." 
You are speaking in the wrong language. Hundred percent. You are speaking in detailing knees. Yep. And your clients want to speak in what can you do for me mm -hmm. to bring me value. That's all they care about. But we're so busy trying to impress all the other detailers that follow our page that we're using these big, long-winded phrases and stuff like that <laughs> instead of just speaking to the client and saying, I'm going to make your car shinier. I'm going to make it cleaner. I'm going to put a coating on it that's going to make it easier to clean and have big beads on it. And whenever you speak to their level and what they're looking for, instead of what other people are impressed by, the phone starts to ring. Mm. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Mark, you've put on one heck of an episode, my friend. I I'm super happy we did this. I'm super glad um, that we've connected finally and can continue our relationship with each other. If people want to check out Detail Mentor, if they want to check you out, if they want to watch those live videos every day or five days a week, how can people get a hold of you? How can they interact with you? How can they find you? All that good stuff. Gotcha. My personal business is called Visual Pro Detailing out of Johnson City, Illinois. Please do not contact me through my own personal business. Mm. <laughs> if you want to reach out, I would greatly prefer that you either look me up on Facebook under Mark Barger, or the best thing is to go to the Facebook blog page, which is Detailers Business Journey. And that's where I do my daily live videos. If mm. you are a detailing professional, and only if you're a detailing professional, I would invite you to join the Facebook group that I administrate, which is called Detailing Business Professionals. <laughs> and um, they will ask you questions. And my moderators, they are hardcore. And if you don't answer the questions to show that you are who you say you are to get in, they won't let you in. But if you're a detailer, answer the questions. We'll let you in the group. We put a lot of content down there as well. If you're interested in signing up for the mentorship site, it's at www.detailmentor.com. And if you have any questions before you sign up, you can send me a message through that website or you can message me through Detailer's Business Journey. And I'd be happy to answer anything you have to ask. <coughs> Excuse me. Love it, man. Love it, love it, love it. Again, thanks for taking the time to uh, come on the show. I really appreciate it, man. It has been a pleasure.